Welcome back to the Notary Podcast hosted by me, Daniel C. Lewis. We love doing this. Today, you're going to hear some great things because we're at the end of this year and to prepare and get yourself set up for next year, I'm going to give you eight things you can do today. That's right. Eight things you can do today to help you prepare for a very successful next year. So check us out. Welcome back to the Notary Podcast hosted by me, Daniel C. Lewis. And today is going to be a great day. If you like the content uh, that we share with you today, because we, we, we love doing this each and every week, we, we definitely want you to like, share, and subscribe to the content that we have. Today's topic, guess what today's topic is going to be? It's going to be eight things since we're at the end of this year. I'm going to give you eight things you can do to starting today to help you properly prepare for a very successful next year. Since we at the end of this year, I'm, I'm so happy to do this. I always sit down uh, starting in October and, and start looking at um, putting goals together for the following year. And this year is no different. Uh, and I just preparing for this podcast, I decided I was going to write down at least eight things that I do to prepare to have a successful uh, uh, next year uh, as a notary entrepreneur. So I want to share that with you. And hopefully, like I said, if you like this content, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to this content. We're found exclusively on YouTube. So let's get right down to it. Let's just chop this up. A couple of things that I do to prepare myself each and every year for a successful year is the first thing that uh, whether you're a new notary or a seasoned notary, uh, these these are some things that I think will really help you uh, or help guide you or even give you some indication. Now, you may use one or two of these things. You may not use any of them, but I'm hoping that they will help you spark some interest in some things that you can do to be successful next year. So let's get right into it. The first thing, and this is number one, you want to embrace digital marketing. As a notary entrepreneur, this is this is going to be critical to, to moving your business forward. And that includes updating your online presence and uh, ensuring your website, social media, and Google profile pages are current, professional, and reflect your brand. And also that includes your SEO optimization, improving your website SEO so clients can find you easily through search engines. That's that's so critical, especially if you're doing general notary work or you're doing uh, estate planning or you're doing notary signing agent work, having your optimization, help having people be able to find you when they want a notary is so critical. So make sure your SEO optimization is up to date and uh, make sure you have uh, your, you, you update your content on your websites. Consider creating a blog, video series like this, or social media posts about notary related topics to build authority and connect with potential clients. So that first thing, which includes updating your presence, SEO optimization, uh, content creation, updating that, embracing digital marketing. It's going to be critical because that's how people find me. Um, to find me, they, they do a search notary near me. And uh, even if they get someone else, I am connected with that other person and they connect them to me. So embrace digital marketing. The next thing, number two, that I think the second thing you can do um, to help you set up that foundation for a successful notary entrepreneur business is leverage technology for efficiency. Let me say that again, leverage technology for efficiency. That means use automotive uh, scheduling services like uh, Calendly, 
um, for your client, so that your clients can, uh, if they're looking for general notary work, or even if they're looking for uh, for you as a notary signing agent, have them use Calendly to schedule meetings with you, allowing your clients to book appointments directly online. That gives you a heads up over other uh, notary entrepreneurs in your area using uh, uh, technology for efficiency. Uh, using digital document handling, investing in software that le lets you securely handle and or organize your uh, digital document, uh, digital documents. Um, there's all kinds of software out there that will help you uh, with that. I use, uh, for example, uh, I use PDF Filler. Uh, I always use that on documents. I have uh, several clients that. Uh, I use that with, and uh, especially if I get uh, in assignments and I use that to fill in the, the state, county, uh, maybe the name, the date, uh, my notary commission uh, information. So there's several things you can use to help you with that, uh, with leveraging uh, technology. And maybe you should also consider uh, in that leveraging technology, upgrading your equipment, like you're consider using a mobile printer, a high speed scanner and backup battery pack for seamless service. Every other year, every two years, I always get a new laptop uh, to make sure I'm using up to date apps and um, my, my laptops have up to date security protocols. So I always use that. And of course, that's a, a write-off. So leveraging technology for efficiency. Now, I know some notaries coming into this business, uh, they're saying, well, hey, you know what? Laptops cost, printers cost, um, scanners cost. But if you're running your business correctly, these are all tax deductible things because you're using, you're actually using these things for your business. So the second thing, leveraging technology for efficiency. A lot of uh, things that you can find apps, like I use Miles IQ, Tiny Scanner, um, for example, to scan documents when I go to hospitals, nursing homes, assisted living, uh, rehabilitation centers, scan those documents, fax, fax those documents, Tiny Fax. Um, those have been great resources for me as a general, uh, traditional notary doing general notary work. So definitely leveraging technology uh, for efficiency is a second thing that I I uh, want to um, uh, offer as something to get yourself ready for next year. Just looking into that, um, looking at, looking at your business and setting your business goals. The third thing that I think that you should definitely look into, and this is a huge thing. All of these are huge. Is diversifying your services. I'm going to Maryland for their Maryland Notary Day, and that's going to be the topic I'm going to talk about, diversifying their services, uh, your notary services. Explore new certifications in that category. Certifications in areas like mortgage signings, maybe take a mortgage signing course, uh, apostille course, remote online notarization. Diversify your service can increase your service offerings and increase the stability of your business. Also, uh, another way you can diversify your service, and I was thinking about this um, uh, over the last several months. Uh, after when in 2008, I had to diversify my business from being just a notary signing agent. I 100% of my business was uh, done um, doing real estate closings. Then there was a collapse in 2008 of the mortgage industry. And I had to diversify my business in order to uh, keep my business running. And one of the things I did at that time, as I was thinking about this over the last couple of months, was I got certified in I-9 verifications. And we just created, Lewis Notary and Training Services, just created a I-9 verification certification course because moving forward, in this industry, a lot of our clients are looking at uh, notaries that are certified in certain areas like estate planning, have some type of certification. Uh, I know in Indiana, they want you to have some type of certification or a title producer's license in, in real estate transactions. Um, for the I so a lot of the clients that we have are looking for notaries that have some type of certification in the areas they want. 
um, clients that we that come to us for I-9s, they want us to be certified and know exactly what we're doing with I-9s. And so we created a nice course uh, uh, for I-9s uh, that can help you diversify uh, your business, covers everything what I-9s are, how to, how to do the verification, what fees to charge, it covers everything. So I want to highly recommend that. That's at Lewis Training dot online if you're interested in that but i9 certification courses are a great way to build your client in fact just today i got a text from a person that i did an i9 certification way back in 2009 he comes to me after i did his i9 certification um, in 2009 he, he comes back to me at least two or three times a year to uh, get other things notarized he comes to my office and he just texted me today and said, hey, he had something else he needs me to notarize. He wants to set up an appointment to come to my office. And I, that relationship started with me doing an I-9 verification. So um, diversifying your business with certifications because that's what clients are wanting uh, nowadays. In fact, just to, just to give you an example, recently one of our clients, we do background screenings uh, for our company with, with a couple of our clients and one of them wanted a background screening and when and I always ask for a copy of it and when I got it back they didn't just want a background screening for um, a criminal they wanted a background screening for uh, what your credit score was they want to know if you're a person that is financially fit so that leads me to the next thing that I, I want to impose on you. And this is number four, strengthening your finances, being financially fit, budget for growth, uh, being because a lot of our clients now that I'm seeing, and I'm seeing this trend, um, they don't want to send a notary that has a 400 credit score or below to handle million dollar deals anymore. They want somebody that is financially, not only certified, but also financially fit. That's not going to uh, ask inappropriate questions at a closing on a million dollar deal. So um, strengthening the, the, your financial, um, uh, or being more financially uh, fit, financially manage, managing your financially, um, your finances in a, uh, keeping them in a better state will help you get more business, I predict, in the future. Uh, you need a budget for growth. Set a budget that includes investments in marketing, equipment, and continuing education. Uh, a lot of our customers, and I, I can't stress this enough, are looking for uh, notaries to handle their deals, especially those million dollar deals, those high-end cars, those high-end assets, notaries that are financially fit. Um, review your pricing strategy, evaluate your pricing model to ensure it reflects, and this is a part of being financially fit. It reflects the value you provide and, uh, accounts of in, for inflation or increased operating costs. A lot of notaries, especially when they first come into the business, the first thing they look at, I'm going to, uh, one of my, uh, advantages that I have over other notaries that I'm going to be the lowest price notary and they price themselves out of the market. It costs them more uh, to do the service than they charge because they're trying to, their strategy is to be the lowest price notary. So they think the person's going to keep or the client's going to keep sending them business. I don't agree. I mean, everybody has to run their business the way they want to run it. I don't agree with this, this strategy. You should evaluate your pricing model to ensure it reflects the value you provide and accounts for inflation or increased operating costs. So this is, that's part of strengthening your financial uh, model for your notary business. Um, there's also a lot of uh, accounting software used. You can use this uh, software to streamline your expenses. Uh, uh, there's all kinds of notary software there that can help you look at your expenses, um, look at a summary of your expenses, look at your expenses, from a week standpoint to a month standpoint to a, a quarter standpoint, that's three months, to a year standpoint. So there's a lot of notary software, just something to consider. You need to strengthen your finances as a notary, just something to consider. Um, as And that's number four, 
being financially fit and strengthening your financial uh, picture, your business picture. Number five, the thing that I see that uh, will help notaries uh, prepare for the next year is focus on the customer experience, if that makes sense. Survey your, your clients. Um, I, when I first started my business, and I wanted to get my name out there, what I did was go, went to, uh, and this is when I was doing just strictly uh, no signing agent work, that's with real estate, I would go out and I would survey the client before, I, a potential client that is, somebody who didn't hire me, and I asked, do you use notaries? I'll send them either a survey or I walk in their office and say, hey, I'm surveying um, top title companies in the area that use notaries. Do you use notary, mobile notaries? And of course, uh, they would say, hey, yeah, I'm a top uh, signing company. And I asked, do you use notaries? Um, and uh, what do they think about notaries? How, what do you think about the notaries' fees? How, what, what's the best thing you like about service? Use some general questions like that. And they would give me back feedback, what they look for in, uh, first they'd tell me, I am using a mobile notary, or we don't use mobile notaries, then I scratch them off the list and go to the next one. But then if they're using mobile notaries, they tell me what they like, what they don't like, and um, I would use that to introduce myself, use that survey to introduce myself. But as a notary entrepreneur, you should have a way that you're communicating with your clients that, hey, I care about what you think about mobile notaries, what you think about me as a mobile notary. So use surveys uh, to help that, and that helps you with that focus on the customer experience. And also you wanna refine the, your client's journey. Enhance each touch point from initial contact to post appointment follow-up to ensure a seamless and positive experience. You wanna put yourself in your customer's shoes to make sure they have an experience that is both uh, great to invest in, invest in your business, have you coming back over and over again. Um, and you want to make sure you understand your client's point of view. Uh, some notaries even have a loyalty program which offers incentives and discounts to repeat customers to build loyalty and referrals. I know, um, uh, one of the things that in our area, and it might be in your area, when you look up notary near me and you put in your zip code, the first things that come up are some of the corporate corporations like UPS stores. Um, I always have an incentive for our local UPS store if they call me for such things as real estate or apostille work or uh, something like that, or they have their client call me, I'll bring them a Starbucks card or something like that uh, as a loyalty um, incentive for them to call me because they have notaries, but their notaries can't do everything like that. So the fifth thing is focus on your client's uh, experience with your service. Because after all, for me, um, being a notary, entrepreneur, I don't want to just be uh, a notary entrepreneur on one assignment with a person and one and done, so to speak. I want them, once they use my service as a notary, I want them to call me back over and over. I want them to they have their kids call me. I want their grandkids to call me, their aunts and uncles, their, grands, their grandparents, their mothers, their fathers. I want the whole family experience to call me over and over again to, because I want to give them that great customer service. And, I, and uh, when I uh, started changing my business from just uh, notary signing agent work to general notary work, that's what I kept in mind. Um, what's the focus on the customer's experience? What's, what will the customer experience from their point of view? So that's number five. The sixth thing that also is so important um, to, to, to set yourself up to be successful this next year is strengthening your industry connections. Now, how do you do that? How do you strengthen your industry connections? First thing I want to recommend in that there's a couple of things that you can do. First thing, by strengthening your industry connections, join a professional organization, professional notary association. Memberships in associations like the National Notary Association or even the American Society of Notaries or even the remote online notary 
uh, Association um, is, a, is another one, can offer resources, networking, and credibility. These are great associations. I, I, when I started my business, I joined the National Notary Association, but these other associations are great also. So, but I want to really recommend uh, going to these associations, joining these associations, and using uh, their resources to help you pivot you into um, a more successful uh, notary entrepreneurial business. Attend uh, conferences, workshops, webinars, Definitely attend uh, if you have a local meetup, notary meetup. And if you don't have a local meetup in your state, you can even be the host of a notary meetup in your state. And if you need help with that, please reach out to me. I'll help you uh, form because I've been doing notary meetups in person as well as online. And I'll help you form uh, a notary local notary meetup group in your area. So feel free to reach out with me. Stay con current in staying, uh, going to these notary meetups, conferences, and webinars. It helps you stay current with industry, tra industry trends, laws, and best practices. So you want to definitely uh, attend that in strengthening your industry connections. Uh, partner with other professionals. Uh, my first couple of years in the business, I partnered with this lady named Quincy Perry, who had a lot more experience than me, but it was such a valuable uh, relationship that we had. Uh, we built referral partnerships with, uh, you can build referral partnerships with real estate agents, attorneys, and banks to increase your visibility and client base. I have a partnership with my bank manager. I have a partnership with uh, my CPA. I have a partnership with my insurance person. I have a partnership with um, other insurance uh, industry uh, people. And I have a partnership with notaries. I'm, I meet with other notaries. We refer business to, to each other and it's a great business. So strengthening your industry connections is a big thing to do. And that's number six. Number seven, Stay up to date, and all of these are great, but stay up to date with legal changes in your local market. Um, I talked to someone who has a national class that she, she teaches nationally, and she recently gave me a call and said, hey, I didn't realize in your state, they just made some changes in the laws, and she's been teaching uh, people this class nationally, and she didn't realize in the state that uh, there's been changes since she's created her class. So uh, you, what you want to do as a notary, whether you're new or you're a seasoned notary, you want to stay up to date on regular, regulatory updates. Laws affecting notary services such as RON regulations often vary by state and can change. Keep informed to maintain compliance. So you want to stay up to date on all the legal changes in your state. Uh, training and compliance Attend training sessions to stay current with industry standards and ensure you're meeting the latest legal requirements. A lot of, I just, this past week or last week, I got a call from someone who um, there were some changes to the laws back in 2020 here in Indiana uh, in how they would do continuing education with notaries. And um, for, for whatever reason, getting busy, this person, um, didn't keep up with the changes and her notary commission got um, revoked from the Secretary of State. That's and, and she didn't realize it until several months later in doing transactions. It's important to keep up with the regulatory changes in your state. And that's another thing that you want to do. That's number seven. Number eight, the eighth thing you do, I'm looking at my notes here, Invest in personal development. Uh, that last one, keeping up with the regulatory changes, really is a great segue in this. Invest in personal development. Uh, public speaking and communication skills. Take some classes on that. I myself, for example, I go to a Toastmasters group regularly every week um, to, increase, to increase my communication skills, uh, my knowledge helps me prepare for preparing for uh, presenting documents at real estate closings. I 
I'm a constant learner, and I think that uh, we all have to be, if you're going to be successful in this business and have sustainable success, uh, you want to uh, look for ways that you can sharpen your skills. Uh, and I want to highly recommend, if you have a toast, there's Toastmasters groups all over the country, definitely join a Toastmasters group, really too, and this is something I highly recommend to help you with your communication skills. Courses in communication can enhance your client's interaction and boost your confidence. I've been in a Toastmasters group now for at least the last 25 years, and it's a great experience. I go every week. Uh, sales training can, can, might be a great way to uh, inc invest in your personal development. Improving your sales skills will help you communicate your value and close more deals. A lot of, and I think having some type of sales training really does that as far as for notaries, because a lot of notaries don't know what their value are. Their value is, and they underprice themselves. And if you're underpricing yourself, if something costs, for example, uh, a $1, uh, for you to do the service, and that includes fuel, get your notary commission, uh, education, insurance bonds. It costs you to do a simple notarization, one dollar, for example. But you're charging fifty cents. Sooner or later, more sooner than later, you're going to be out of business. So, it's a, having some type of sales training would be a great way to uh, benefit you as a notary entrepreneur. And, and also uh, investing in uh, personal development. Every year, I sit down with a group of me and a couple a group of people, a group of my friends. We sit down and we do goal setting. We do vision boards. We do uh, long-term planning, uh, planning out five years, three years, one year. Uh, and then in our one year, we plan out each quarter how we're going to get to that, that uh, place that we want to get to. Uh, the goal setting. Uh, Define measurable goals for the next year, whether it's income, client growth, or new services to keep your business on track. Setting goals will definitely keep your business on track. A lot of times people say, hey, I want to make a certain amount of money. They, they approach me and say, hey, Daniel, uh, can you mentor me? I want to make a certain amount of money. And I say, great. Let me see what your goals are. Let me, let me see what your uh, business plan is. How are you setting that up? I don't know. I want you to tell me. Um, you should, as a notary entrepreneur, definitely uh, have uh, that in your toolbox, a business plan, goals that you have for next year. And that includes financial goals, marketing goals, or what have you. You should have that in your, and you, you should be thinking about that now. Um, and this is a, at the end of the year, what you're going to do for the following year. Um, a lot of times people fall in that trap saying, well, I, that's just kind of stressful that uh, makes me makes it more um, there I, uh, uh, I don't have enough flexibility to do what I want and then when the, when the year comes without a plan it they just fall flat the business falls flat and they hope that uh, something happens to, to boost their business whether it's something happens in the mortgage industry, lower interest rates, or hopefully something happens, a builder comes and meets them and think they're, they're hot, but you, they're hottest thing uh, in the world to help their business. But the thing is you have to have goals and you have to have a plan to set to help you hit your goals, your financial goals at least. And that includes, and one of the things I tell people, uh, especially when I first start mentoring them, I tell them this. I say, you have to set up. The first thing I tell them to do is you want to start your business. You want to have a business plan, but you also want to set up uh, to keep it balanced, a little uh, financial trip for yourself, or a little vacation for yourself. It doesn't have to be something big. It could be something small, a little a weekend excursion or something like that because that hits all the parameters of what I'm saying about goals. If you're planning a weekend vacation for yourself, like even if it's a cross town or you're getting something um, on the other side of your state, plan something for yourself because that hits everything that you need to do to be successful in your business. If you're planning a little vacation for you, a little excursion for yourself, 
you have to plan, okay, how I'm going to get there, where I'm going to stay, what I'm going to eat, where, what entertainment I'm going to have. If, uh, how you got to, you got to budget your money. You got to budget your time. You got to budget, um, uh, and you got, it forces you into budgeting. Okay. I could put a little bit of money, maybe 10, $20 away for that trip six months down the road. So, uh, that goes into planning too. So let's, let's just do a recap really quick. First, I said, embrace digital marketing. That's the first thing you have to do to get ready for a successful next year. Leverage technology for efficiency. And that goes with uh, automotive uh, scheduling, like Calendly, uh, setting yourself up with a uh, digital handling of documents. Uh, diversify your business, whether that's with uh, the third thing, diversify your business, getting cer certifications that you need to help you market your business. Like we started off with the I-9 certification um, uh, found on our website. Uh, strengthening your financial uh, picture um, is number four. Um, companies are now demanding that we use notaries with a higher credit score, so to speak. Not just the um, uh, criminal uh, aspect of it in background checks. They're now checking credit scores. They don't want to send notaries with a 400 or lower credit score to do assignments that have million dollars of assets in them. So uh, getting financially fit, uh, budgeting yourself, uh, uh, reviewing your pricing strategy, how much you're charging, um, using accounting software, uh, having tax strategies is another one. Uh, and then the fifth one, Focus on customer experience. Focus on what is the customer going to see when I come in. I know what my job is. What is going to be that customer experience? How can you refine the customer experience um, uh, that you have with them versus other notaries? Um, maybe you start a loyalty program. Number six, uh, strengthen your industry connections by joining a professional uh, notary organization like the National Notary Association, American Society of Notaries, uh, the, the New York Notary Alliance is another great, great way, great one to join. The Remote Online Notary um, Association uh, is another great one um, to join. Join, strengthen your industry connections. Uh, ten workshops, uh, ten conferences, uh, ten uh, local meetups. That's going to help you uh, g get uh, uh, build referral partnerships. Build referral partnerships with real estate agents, attorneys, banks, um, accountants. Increase this increase your visibility and your client base. Number seven, stay up to date on legal changes. You need to know what the legal changes are. You need to be the expert in your state um, what the legal changes are whoever is responsible uh, for the guidelines in your state make sure you go on their website whether that's the secretary of state usually the secretary of state and make sure you have the most up-to-date handbook um, that they have out there knowing what the guidelines are in your state is going to help you um, be the best notary you can be. And then the final thing, invest in personal development. I highly recommend investing in going to a Toastmasters meeting, joining Toastmasters, developing your public speaking skills and your communication skills, um, and uh, maybe joining uh, or entering a sales training, a notary sales training uh, meeting. And also um, with investing in personal development, setting goals, attending, uh, I've attended goal setting time management meetings. They have been so helpful in, uh, in, in my past attending those it just, I, I can't put a number on how helpful they have. They have helped me, um, sustain my business for several years, been in business now for a little over 21 years. Uh, so, uh, doing all those things, these preparations will help you stay out in a competitive field, stay compliant and enhance your reputation in the notary industry for the following year. If you follow this, you're going to be great. Hopefully you like this podcast. If you did like the podcast, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. We love doing this each and every week. Got to come back next week because you're not going to believe what we're going to talk about next week. 
See you next week.